Hello and welcome to yet another quick tutorial. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to try and then move our 3D model from Blender uh, onto Behance or any of the art portfolio websites that gives us the ability to showcase our 3D models so you could actually view them in 3D space. So this is a very cool way to spice up your portfolio. So this is just a quick uh, uh, way to go about things. Now, here's a model of um, an experiential setup that I, I did for a client. And we're going to try and then move this around in 3D space over the web. Now, the way we're going to do we're going to go about this is we're going to export as a Colada DAE file. And then we'll move it along with our textures. And then we would be able to um, build it up within the 3D space so that we can actually showcase to any website that's able to uh, showcase our 3D model. So maybe if you have renders of your image, then you can also add the 3D model itself to get uh, viewers to actually see how the model looks to complete 360 degrees. So. Over here, um, a few things to note also when you are trying to move files is that you want to also be sure that your file doesn't become too heavy. The way we go about this is we first have to save it to Sketchfab. And sorry, if you are a free, uh, if you're going to be using the free version, you can upload model sizes of up to 100 megabytes. But if you are the pro, then you can uh, go as much as 2 gig. Yeah, but 2 gig will also be too heavy a file for us to be able to view it online unless they have to wait a while to download the info that will be shown so um i'm going to show you a quick way to get this file uh, ready for uh, 3d viewing on the web so with my model here the first thing you want to do is you want to package all your textures in one folder and that will help you so that when you move the files over there what is going to happen is that you'll be able to uh, link the files back to the model when you've uh, uh, exported it to the 3D model. So to go about this, what I will do is I will select everything and then I'll come to File, External Data and Pack Resources. So at the bottom here, you see Packed 57 files. So it's packed all the textures into the blend file but since we're going to use a different file format we would want to unpack them now the textures that you see here are from different folders on my machine so it will become a bit cumbersome to gather everything again so to be able to get all of them in one folder what you do is you come back to external data and unpack then write files to current directory so what that will do is it will showcase where it is stored the folder. So I've created a textures uh, folder within where I'm going to store my textures. And I'll show you how that is done. So if I come to my folder where I had all my things, I had prepared 3D folder. And what you see here is, sorry. What you see here is the textures. So we have all the textures in this file that is ready to be exported to anywhere else. So whilst that, that is done, what we're going to do is we will select all the objects and then we'll come to File, Exports, and we'll export as Kulada or DAE file. So what I'll do is I'll call it um, experiential trial. So this is just a trial to um, show how, showcase how it's done. So what you want to do is make sure your selection only so that it affects only what you selected. In that case, you don't want to select objects that are maybe off your screen. Maybe if you are working with multiple, um, what's it called? Uh, objects you don't also want to include them all they might you know uh, screw the way you want your things to be uh, aligned or showcased when 
build online. Next is the texture options, uh, relieve it as it is. So I think we'll basically have everything set at its default. And we we'll just select export.colada. So it says exported 88 objects. So now that we're done with that, we will switch over to Sketchfab and then continue from there. Now, in Sketchfab, what we'll just quickly do is um, we'll click on Upload. And before we um, send our file or bring our files over here, what we always want to do is you can also, as it's written down here, you can also upload an archive file like zip, raw, or z. 7z so normally it's good to zip your files so what we'll do is we'll come over to our folder where we've created everything and okay so with um the dae file what it does is it creates all these folders but since we already have the textures folder over here we just select the textures folder here and exponential and we'll select it and say exp out archive zip and we'll just call it um, experiential experiential trial give it a moment to just get everything okay so we have a file here whoops uh, just that's uh, trial. okay so let me hit back on our um sketch pub We'll just select the folder where we want going to get the zip file and we'll select open and it says um we'll showcase all the files that are in this zip file that is going to unzip whilst it uploads so without further ado let's hit upload files so um you see depending on the size of your file and also speed of your internet this should be done in about a few minutes or so so we'll pause the video and we'll continue once it is done okay so um it's finished uploading and what you see here is um it's now processing the files or the model to be showcased in a 3d space over the internet or over the web so let's just give it a few um minutes over here and it will showcase the work I think one way to go about this is to view our model. So um, once it's finished processing, we now have our model in 3D space that we can actually now have a quick look at it. But if you can see, I will have a few textures that are missing and we can quickly edit it by going to our 3D settings. So edit and it will take us up to the 3D model. And from here, you can actually make some edits and add some uh, effects to your 3D model to us to get it a very nice uh, rendition whenever it's viewed online. So in, to begin with, the screens over here seem to have lost their textures and I think in the baskets and the wood to seem to have lost them. So we we'll quickly go over them and then restore them back to their original texture. So to do that, what we're going to do is we switch to material view and we'll tell it to zoom on selected and highlight selectable materials. So when we come over here, so we have our screen and to change it we will come to our base color select texture choose texture you can see the files that came with the machine show here so we we'll come here to one this also come over here and we will also switch this over to x1 a screen, select texture, 
Okay. So to view around in this 3D space, if you want to pan the uh, shift key and you'll be able to move around or pan around your area and you just use your mouse button, you can rotate around it. So that will help you to do your selection. The next one here will be our picker. So come here. So what you can also do is uh, and switch the glossiness of our tier. That nice finish. Okay, um, also, good, I want to, good. Give you that nice metallic finish. Uh, also, I can see the machine glass material. I think one way to go about it is to test it and use it. This. Just uh, identical. Come back here. Good. Um, the material. So, depending on which materials that you have available, you can use to give back all the textures to your file. But, um, if I switch back to my Blender file. You can see the tiles, the tile texture. Let's see, the tile texture is still there, but um, you can edit it a bit to give it uh, a bit more. Select the texture. White tiles. Okay. So we have our file. So this is just a quick way to get our file prepared for our um, model and what we're going to do now is once we have everything that we want set we can go in a bit more and set our environments the brightness you can use the brightness of this light intensity Yes. Maybe you can also play around. Let's 
settings over here, your environment map. I think uh, we are good to go. So once we play around with this, we can now hit publish. And we need to save settings before. So we we'll say and publish. Now that we've saved, let's see my model. So we have our model now ready. Okay, so we have our model now in here. So we're going to switch over to uh, Ehans and we're going to see how we're going to be able to move this model showcase in Ehans. I already have uh, images of this, rendered images of the file, so we'll just add the 3D model also to it and we'll see how it will display within uh, Behance. So we are in my Behance profile and we're going to quickly add our 3D model to our uh, artwork that we've already done. So in this case, it's this edit. So uh, it's an experiential zone that I did for uh, a furniture company alongside with um, some Samsung products. So what we're going to do is we have the option to add 3D. So when we come here, it shows you where we can actually get our 3D models from and so much more. But since we are going to use Sketchfab, now, the way to go about this is we come to 3D model and we'll select our model here. The showcases those the model. So now we have an embed. So this is what is the code that we will need to copy. Copy to clipboard, then we'll come back to our has profile and one bed. So once we have this and now load the 3D model. So it says click and hold. Give it some time to load it up from here. And now we have our model that we can actually now put through. So with that done, all we do is do is update projects with a few minutes, a few seconds to update. So I'll select a view, a preview. So we have the models shown here, and then we can now load in the model showcase. So this is a very pretty, neat way for people to actually kind of have a much more wider experience with your models. So they can actually appreciate what the artwork does going into it. So this is very handy when you want to showcase any 3D artworks that you've done and give the viewer a bit more experience with what with your creative. So this is just um, a beginner's level for how to be able to showcase your Blender artworks within websites such as uh, Behance. And the same way we did for Behance, we can also do that also for ArtStation. So that is also a website that we can do. And on the next tutorial, we will go ahead to actually find ways to optimize your models if, let's say, your models are a bit uh, big in size. But that's about it for this video. Uh, thank you so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.